Hi, I'm Amber Hurdle with Amber Hurdle Consulting, and today I'm here to talk to you about four key behavioral traits that anyone who is hiring right now needs to consider as you put together the job description for whatever, whatever position it is that you're hiring for, and you need to keep these things in mind while you're sourcing candidates and interviewing for this position, okay? So, um, just real quick, I want to let you know that we did completely book up. We are full for the um, founding members launch of Velvet Machete Leadership Academy. If you did not get in on that, I will put the link in, in the description of this video or in the comments, wherever you're seeing it. And um, you can get on the wait list or like the notification list for when we relaunch it in the fall but um, you just missed out this time. So I'm sorry, it just probably wasn't the right time for you, but I'm super excited to be working with um, just all kinds of different super cool leaders. Um, we have like Fortune 100, Fortune 500. Um, we have like large business, but maybe not Fortune 500, 100. Um, I've got small to medium sized businesses. I have solopreneurs. I have government. I have um, nonprofit. I mean, it is going to be the most magical experience because something that I've really learned over the years is that we kind of get in our little worlds and this is how I do it. And this is how my industry does it. And then, um, and then we don't really go outside of our industry to look for other ways to consider how we're going to function as leaders or as a business. So this is going to be amazing and I can't wait. So if you are on board, I can't wait to work with you. I can't wait to do this um, for perpetuity because it's a membership program. So we will be together month after month and it's going to be amazing. All right. So let's get back to the four behavioral traits that you need to pay attention to when you're hiring for a particular position. So I'm going to go over the traits and then I'm going to give you an example. And then we'll talk about how these traits might um, live and breathe in a particular position. So you can really clearly see why it matters. Now, the first trait we need to pay attention to from a behavioral perspective, not like what's my personality or how do I psychologically see the world? Like how am I driven every single day in my job? So the first one is how do you value and generate ideas or make decisions? So um, are you more of an independent decision maker or are you more of a collaborative person? Um, do you like your ideas best or do you like the ideas best that are the best for the group? This is very key when you're putting people in roles, because if you have someone who needs lots of input and they would just want what's best for the group and you need them to be decisive, you need them to make decisions on the fly with confidence, then um, that could get really wonky. You'll be frustrated with people who aren't taking initiative when it's just not really how they're wired. They just need some more touch points there. So number two is how much social activity do you need at work? Like, how much social activity do you need? And then also that obviously um, has a big impact on your communication. So um, do you need to chat it up with others? Do you need to spitball ideas? Do you, need, um, do you need the energy of other people around you in order to work at your best? Um, or do you need some space because you tend to be a little more introspective? Um, you need time to think about things. So if I'm going to ask you for your opinion, can I just plop into your office and be like, this is what I want to do. And what do you think about this? And then you're going to be like, oh my gosh, what about that? Like, are you that kind of a person? Or are you the kind of person where I need to say, hey, um, I'm having this idea. I would love to know your thoughts on it. Can I come back to you tomorrow? Um, and you think about it on your way home from work tomorrow. And we'll chat it up tomorrow. That might be another approach. So not everybody has the same need to be around people. And not everybody has the same need to, um, to communicate and generate ideas through um, conversing with other people. Some people just need to kind of get in their head and think about things that way. So that's number two. The third thing is your environment. What type of environment unleashes your greatest potential? So do you need like a fast paced environment? Do you need competing priorities? Do you need every day to look different? Or do you need for most days to look the same and you thrive on routine and, um, you are definitely like the master of processes. Like this is how we do it. This is how we do it every single day. And that's what makes you feel satisfied at work. Um, if you're like me, I'm, I want every day to look different. I want, I want throughout the day to look different all throughout the day. If you were looking at somebody who works for me, that person is going to be the person who wants to like do the same type of work every day. And that's a good thing for me because I need that compliment, right? So that's the third. The fourth piece is 
how formal do we need for this, this person to be in this particular position in light of our business goals, in light of what the function of this particular position is, how formal do we need this person to be? Do we need them to need a lot of data points in order to make a decision? Um, are they a rule follower? Do we need this person to dot every I and cross every T? Um, or do they need a lot of flexibility so that they have space for innovation because they're going to change things and a few things might slip in the cracks, but for what comes out of that, that's okay. So for me, for example, I am for sure an innovator, right? Also known as I'm a rule breaker, unless I'm going to like cost money or I'm going to get in legal trouble. I'm probably going to bend the rules. It's more of like a guideline. Are these really rules or are they more like guidelines? So if you had to hire me and my finger was on the nuke button, that would be a bad plan because you want somebody who's going to do things by the book. If you've got somebody with their finger on the nuke, nuke button, right? So now that we know you've kind of got like, you know, how do you value how do you generate ideas? How do you make decisions? How much social activity do you need? Um, how do you need a more driving environment or a more stable environment? Are you the rule or excuse me, are you the, um, the change maker or are you the person who um, implements the change or are you the rule breaker or the rule follower? Are you formal or informal? So all that in context, let's take a look at an inventory manager position in a high volume, fast paced company. So depending on what your business goals are, and of course, who else is already on the team, because we want to make sure that we have complementary behaviors on a team so that every, everything is, is full and, um, and, and that there aren't any holes, right? We want things to complement each other. We don't want everybody to be the same or not everybody would be needed. Um, so we need to understand the team, but I would venture to say that in this type of environment, um, you would need somebody who is moderately independent. They can make a decision if they need to, but they can also be collaborative. It wouldn't be a stretch for them to be collaborative because they might have um, members of the sales team or members of the service team who might need them to flex and adjust based on what's going on. And so as they're creating ideas and processes and they're doing business and they're working with customers and that sort of thing, um, they need to be able to flex either on, I need to make a decision to make it happen, or I need to go with the team and do what's best for the team. So that one I would have kind of moderate. Um, given that they're likely going to be like in a small closet um, office space in a warehouse um, alone with, with, purchase orders and transfer orders and me, myself and my computer and occasional calls maybe, um, we can gather that the person who's right for this role is probably going to be a less social person because you don't want that person to want to hop up out of their seat and go socialize with people every hour because they have that need. You don't want to have to feel like you've got to put a seatbelt on them for them to just do their job. So um, we would want them to, um, have a moderately low social drive, but enough where they can have customer conversations and get along with the team. Um, so we don't want this to be like someone who just wants to be left alone completely. Right. Um, and so then we also need to consider what type of work environment they're in and what this particular role, how this exists within that work environment. So since it's a high volume and fast growing company, um, we could assume that this is going to be a dynamic environment, right? So things are going to be changing every day, maybe on the half day, maybe on the hour. So somebody who could be flexible and, and live in that fast paced environment and handle disruption while still being able to get back on task because they're just used to that. That's how they're wired. Um, that would probably be the type of natural type of um, behavioral drive that you need out of out of the ideal candidate. Um, now, again, we're back to inventory manager, right? So this is inventory control. So let's just say that's probably going to be someone with a high degree of formality. Um, and, and depending on the structure of the team, like if you have a bunch of people who are not super formal, you wouldn't want like a crazy formal person because then they drive each other crazy, right? There'd be a lot of conflict, but you would need somebody who helped pull everybody up into the rules that need to happen in order to control that inventory. So they would help hold other team members accountable to, you know, making sure they always had a purchase order, make sure they always had a transfer order. Um, otherwise the inventory would not be released. I mean, it needs to be that kind of person's like, nope, unless I have my paperwork, this is not going out the door. So where's my paperwork? Um, and so that's the type of 
of behavior that would be a match for that particular job. Um, and, and the demands of that job day in and day out. So again, we would need somebody who could make decisions independently or they could be collaborative. You would want somebody kind of in the middle there. You would want somebody who wasn't so social because they're not gonna have the opportunity for a lot of social interaction. And then you would need somebody who can handle a fast paced environment and competing priorities. And you'd want a rule follower who could dot every I, cross every T and hold people accountable to the processes that are in place in order to protect the business um, financially and legally, right? So it's really not about can someone do the job? Somebody on paper could probably do the job. It's will they do the job and will they do it well over a prolonged period of time? And that's just not something that you can evaluate based on a resume. And that's not something you can evaluate um, easily in an interview without like really strategic behavioral questions. So I'll tell you, I just got, just got out of a meeting with a client who um, has implemented these systems in their business. And, uh, and so we, we applied these filters on a job that they're about to hire for. And we reviewed what was going on in the organization with the different team members. And we applied these filters to ensure that the way that they're behaving is a match to the job that they're performing. So it gives you an opportunity to coach someone to a job and not coach based on emotion or on um on just their personality or well that's just how they are it's really about this is these are the behavioral needs for this job and this is how i need you to behave in this job um and so that is that helps you with recognition and celebration that helps you with engagement and that helps you when you're coaching and counseling um, and i know people use different words counseling in some organizations is just kind of what you always do uh, some people call that coaching so whether it, it is behavior um uh like a progressive discipline, you can use it for that as well, or even just affirming that somebody is doing what they need to do in order to help the collective, help the whole team move forward. Um, and so the other part about this particular client that I'm talking about is the last time we had a team meeting, we have quarterly team meetings um, or team manager meetings, they were so happy to report that um, in addition, addition to crushing it, and I'll give you some numbers here in a minute, they were able to get out of some of the weeds that they were in and some of the conflict that they were experiencing the last time I was there because they had this common language, because they knew it wasn't necessarily about the person not wanting to do something or wanting to do something. It was really about how they were wired. And so they were able to show each other grace. Um, they were able to call each other out um, in, a, in a polite and in a friendly family type way because they all had a common language. They knew what drove people's behavior. They knew what needed to happen in particular situations and who was likely the person that can make that happen. Or they might need to support somebody because they know that that's just not how they're wired, but that person had to step up in a way that was maybe beyond how they were wired. And so they could pitch in and help or, or advocate for help. And so it was really cool to see that. Um, and I can tell you, Despite the tornadoes that ripped through Middle Tennessee, despite COVID-19, um, I won't give the exact figures, but I will tell you that by the end of Q2, they're probably going to be up about $600,000 over their goal because they're all moving in the same direction with the same language and the same expectations and the same understanding that this isn't about feelings or I like you or I don't like you. It's this is the job that needs to be done. This is how you're wired. You're wired for this job or here are the areas where maybe you're not wired for that. And so we just need to take that into account and we'll just coach you to the job. And that's coaching each other and that's working as a team. So I couldn't be any more proud of them. I mean, they're amazing. I think it's just magical what they're doing in the business right now. Um, they, my energy increases every time I interact with them on any level. Um, and, and the managers are killing it all because they have this really clear four-step process that they apply to everything. So if this is something you wanna get right because you're tired of the ridiculous cost of turnover, um, because you don't have the time to be sourcing candidates and crossing your fingers and saying your prayers and going on your gut instinct because yeah, they like Tennessee Titans just like you do. And so I felt good vibes from this person, so let's hire them. And then you put them in the role and you're like, what is happening right now? I thought your resume said that you can do this and then suddenly it's not. If that is a reality that you have experienced over and over again and you want a more no-brainer approach, like the easy button. That was easy.
if you want that, then there will be a link in the description or in the comments or wherever you're finding this um, video. If you're on Twitter, make sure, or LinkedIn, make sure you go over to YouTube and look in the description and, um, and you can book an appointment with me. We can talk you through it. And I think you will definitely see the value in having a systematic approach to hiring people right now more than ever, because I don't think that businesses have the same kind of leeway that you had before in terms of um, being able to afford a mishire. So if you get it right on the front end, you save tons of money on the back end. Okay. So that's it for this week. Those are the four different behavioral drives that you need to be looking out for when you are hiring for a particular position. Remember, it's not for the business, it's for that particular position. Um, if you took anything away from this, if, if you got any value from this, I just ask you to like this video, share it with your friends, subscribe to my channel. I would so appreciate it. And then um, I would honestly love to see uh, stories in the comments of those type of jobs that you had that maybe you were not a good behavioral fit for, go ahead and stick those in the comments. Um, I would be great to have a conversation going because it'd really drive the point home that just because you can doesn't mean you should. It's kind of like spandex, right? All right. I hope you have a fantastic week. I hope that you are thriving out there, that your energy is super high and that you're leading well, and I will see you next week.